What are the best handheld ham radios to use at a hunting lease in an off-grid situation out at a farm on a camping trip where you're without shore power? We're going to discuss it today and it's coming up right now. Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the channel. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. I've been a licensed ham radio operator in the state of Texas since 1994. And I've been doing YouTube videos on this channel since about 2015. And on this channel, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of many things that are new in amateur radio. So if that's something that should interest you, stay tuned because I think you're going to like this message. So when at the hunting lease, when out away from grid power, uh, out here at the, uh, at the deer lease, we run on generator power. Uh, we have well water that we truck in and have in holding tanks. So it's very much an off-grid situation. So I thought it'd be a good idea to do a video about what do I use when I'm out here? What kind of radios suit this environment best? What have I had the best results in? And today I'm going to take you through five of those radios and we're going to get into it right now. The first radio I want to tell you about is a UV82 from Baofeng. Baofeng. Bale Fang, however you want to say it. <laughs> I always like to say it in like three different ways. So now this one is not really like it's at the top of my list. The reason I chose this radio is because, number one, it's not a UV5R. I don't particularly care for the UV5R. They're okay. If you want to use a UV5R, that's fine. But this radio is a little bit more durable. It's got a little bit better receiver, a little bit better antenna, and it's still only about 35 bucks, depending on where you look and where you get it. And if you take this out to the hunting lease and you drop it and you break it, it gets knocked off of a truck. It gets, uh, you know, knocked out off the deer stand. If, if, you, if it gets rained on or dropped in the lake, you're not out much. If zombies come and invade your deer lease at nighttime and eat your brains, then you're not going to be out a three or $400 Yezu or Kenwood radio. Okay, this is just a $35, maybe $37 radio. It does come in two different forms. You can get it in 5 watt and you can get it in 8 watt. And you can get it in a, a few more models than that as well. But if you're looking for a throw around, knock around radio, that's just something that is not your expensive Yezu or Kenwood radio. The UV82 works well for a small hunting lease or a camping trip where you're going to be in close proximity to one another anyway. And if you lose it, it's not that big of a deal. In fact, they make a version called a UV82 Charlie, which is a commercial version for Part 90 that you can use on, on uh, Business Band and some other places. And Balefane Tech makes one called a uh, GMRS V1 Victor 1, which is a GMRS version. So if your buddies don't have a ham radio license, for a little bit more money, about 55 bucks, you can get a GMRS V1 from B Tech. Same kind of, same form factor, uh, almost the same features except it's GMRS so it's part 95 accepted and you can use that if you're not using ham radio so there's that option as well. Second one I'll tell you about is the actual Baofeng Tech UV 5x3. Now it's important to note that the Baofeng and Baofeng Tech lines are two different companies. Baofeng's in China, Baofeng Tech is actually in North Carolina in the United States. They take Baofeng radios and they approve upon them in various ways. They have some models of BTEC radios that you never see from Baofeng, such as the, uh, the DMR 6x2 and the UV 50x3. You don't see those models coming from Baofeng themselves. So BTEC takes some Baofeng radios and improves upon them, but they also have some radios that are unique just to their company. The UV 5x3 is a great radio. It has the UV 5R form factor, but it does have a much better receiver, and it is tri-band. Now, I've done some talking about this radio. I've done some reviews on this radio. This one has an extended battery on it and a, and a, and a whip antenna, a longer extended range whip antenna for tri-band. And I like this one because, A, it's still only about 60 bucks, 65 bucks, depending on where you look at it. And it has, it has the option for an extended battery, so it lasts a lot longer optional accessories that you can get because all the UV5R accessories will fit on this but it works a little bit better and it has the 220 band and in my hunting area where we are there's access to two really good 220 repeaters out up here and I like to have access to those and use those when I can and one of them even has all stars so I can connect back to some repeaters back in uh, Dallas Fort Worth a grapevine area where I live which is about an hour and a half away so I, I've got more options with the 220 band up here than most um, 
people might have. Now, if you don't have 220 in your area, you don't have 220 where you're going to camping or going hunting, you might not care about this one, but if you just used it on dual band, it's still a really good radio. Little bit better than the UV82, at least the very cheap one you get on Amazon, but it has some more options to it that you might be interested in. Hey, if you're finding value in this video, uh, consider uh, hitting that like button below because it does help with the YouTube algorithm. And please subscribe if you uh, haven't done yet. Let's get back into it. Now, one of the things I will say is that I use when I'm at my hunting lease, like I've said before, we don't have electricity out here. We run on generators. We uh, truck in our own water to fill the freshwater tanks on our trailers. I use this, and we pretty much only run the generators at nighttime. We don't run it during the day. Even, uh, even during the cold weather, um, all of the, the trailer heaters run on propane. So we don't really have electricity during the day unless we fire up the generator. And we like to try to conserve gas as much as possible. So I use this four-paneled battery charger. And the link will be in the description below for this and for everything else I'm talking about today. This four-panel battery charger works well because you can charge it via micro USB right here at night. And when it's fully charged up via shore power, you can then set it out in the sun during the day after you've charged it all night long. You can set it out during the day and the sun does a great job of keeping it charged. So you can plug micro USB, your phone, a couple of tablets, a couple of the radios we're, I'm, I'm about to talk about, I can charge from this device. That's why I'm mentioning it. So you can keep your phone charged and you can keep a couple of radios charged. It works really well. You just put the, the main charge into it with, with uh, shore power and then you use the solar panel, these, these little panels. They don't, you can charge the whole thing via the little panels, but it, it takes more than a day and it's not really worth it. But it works really well for maintaining the charge that's already in it. The next one we're going to talk about today is the Radioddity GS5B. This is a dual band radio. I did a review on this a while back. This is a great radio because it has Bluetooth. You can program it from an app on your Android smartphone via Bluetooth. And the best part about it is, just like the, the power pack that I just showed you, this one charges via micro USB. So you can so you don't need to bring an extra charger. You can use it's a pretty standard charger that it uses. You can bring it out to the field. You're gonna already have your uh, or I'm gonna already have my power pack that I just showed you with me to charge my phone and to charge my tablet that I run on my drone. So this will charge via micro USB from the same power pack. So when we run the generators at night, I usually charge up all the radios that I don't have that 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 have to have like 110 volt AC power to charge, but this one maintains a charge via micro USB, so it makes it a really great addition. It's nice and durable. It's what I would call weatherproof. I wouldn't submerge it. I think it's, if memory serves, I think it's IP65 rated. I, I don't know. You can look that up. I'll put that in the description below and a link to that video that I posted right here. Nope, right there. Nope, right there. <laughs> it's backwards in the camera. I can't tell. So a link to that video where I posted a review of this will be right up here. But this is a great addition because you can get it rained on, uh, you can program it via um, a, a, an app on your Android phone, so it's easy to program. It's got a VFO mode, so you can go to VFO mode and use it uh, the way you want to there. It's got a flashlight on the bottom of it that's actually pretty bright, and, uh, and, and it's, it's micro USB chargeable. This one sells for about 80 bucks, so it's still under the $100 price point, so it, it could be a good addition for, uh, for another option for you. Last two we'll talk about are going to be the, uh, the, high, the, the two that are the highest price. I started at the bottom and I, I worked my way up. This is a uh, Oshang or Waxon, if you want to read it the way it's written, uh, UV9D Mate. Now, this is the 10-watt version. They do make uh, some 5- and 8-watt versions. They make a UV8 Delta and a UV9 Delta and a couple of different ver uh, variations of the UV9D. This one is cool. I just did a video on this. I've only had it about a month at the time of this recording. I brought this out to the deer lease last weekend when I was when I was hunting on, on opening weekend, and I had it on my belt, and I turned around, and it, uh, it fell off of my belt, and it dropped in the dirt, and I didn't really, it was kind of like mud, and I didn't realize it, and I kept walking, and like later on that day, somebody was driving by, and since it was orange, they saw it, one of my deer lease buddies saw it. He got out, picked it up. It was full of it was had caked in dirt into the keypad, and he brought it back to me. He's like, "Is this yours?" I said, "Yeah." Where did that go? And he said he found it in the road. Works like a charm. No problems at all. I just took a took some uh, pressurized air and uh, blew it out real good after it dried. No problems at all. Still uh, works like a champ. And since it's got 
about nine, eight and a half to nine watts of power per band, as I did on this demonstration video right here, it has a little bit better range, so I can work more repeaters with it, reach out via simplex. Two of the other guys on the deer lease are ham radio operators, so we talk simplex a lot. And over the course of like 175 to 190 acres, which this hunting lease has, sometimes when you get out into the trees or down a hill or up a hill or something like that, some of those GMRS radios, they don't make it all the way across the lease. This one right here has been making it all the way across the lease with no problem on simplex, 2 meter and 440 simplex with a couple other ham radio operators, and I'm very happy with it. Been very happy with this radio, using it out here for the last couple weeks, and I'm looking forward to trying it again. Maybe we'll do another video on it upcoming. The last but certainly not least radio is the most expensive one, but it is my Anytone D878 Plus radio. I had to think about it. I've got too many model numbers in my head right now. This is the Anytone Tri-Band DMR radio, and you could use the, uh, the, the BTEC 6x2 that I talked about earlier. That would work also. The reason I like this one, okay, and the reason that I like this Radiotity as well is because both of these have a Bluetooth option to them. So when you're at the hunting lease, and you want to, to listen to the radio, but you don't want it to be blurring when you're out in the field hunting, you're sitting in the deer stand, you're sitting in the tree stand, you're sitting in the deer blind, and you want to listen to the radio, and maybe you don't want a cord coming out of the radio and running up under your jacket that this would require, okay? If you want Bluetooth, wireless Bluetooth, this works great. So I set this on the frequency I want, I put it, and this is a part 90 radio as well, I put it up as high as I can get it in the stand, in the tree stand or the deer blind that I'm in, and then I've got Bluetooth right here in my ears, wireless, and it doesn't get in the way. And then I can monitor traffic. Somebody calls me, I can reach up there, hit the push to talk right outside, you know, within arm's reach. And in fact, it even comes with a, with a push to talk Bluetooth uh, um, button that you can strap to your finger, or they make a, they make a, a separate uh, Bluetooth wireless microphone for it. So you can try, I haven't try, tried those yet. Maybe I'll do another video on those upcoming. But this one's really cool because it does DMR, and there are DMR repeaters in this area, and I usually bring my DMR hotspot with me. So I've got the option of DMR, I've got wireless Bluetooth, I've got dual band, 2 meters, 440. It's part 90, so I can use it on some commercial frequencies that we have privileges to out here as well due to a, a license that one of the other guys has. And it's just very multi-purpose. Now at $230, which I'll put a link to that one below as well, at $230, it's definitely the most expensive radio uh, out of the five lineup today, but it also gives you the most. And if I'm going to go home and use a radio nine times out of ten when I leave the house and just kind of tooling around town during the day, this is the radio that I grab. So it's not like I leave it at the deer lease and only use it here, spend $230 and only use it every once in a while. I have this with me. 95% of the time when I'm traveling, I keep it in my bag. When I get on a plane, I keep it in my bag. When I get in the truck and go places, whether it's locally or on a road trip, and this is a really great radio, and it's my everyday carry, and I really like um, the features that it has, and it works really well if you want to do wireless Bluetooth and monitor traffic and have options for DMR and analog both. So that is it. That is the list of radios that I have that are my top five choices of radios for the 2020 hunting season at least. Maybe I'll come up with something else later. If you liked this video, again, please subscribe below. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the like button. Check out some of these other videos over in this direction. I think it'll be in that direction when it comes up. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any of these. Question of the day. Which radio do you use when you go camping? and go into the hunting lease. Is it something I didn't mention? Put your comments below, let me know what it is, and we'll catch you next time.